Hey, how's it going guys? It's Nate here. And Fallout 4's post-nuclear Boston takes us to a vast open world over 200 years into the future, where radiation has built up and society has broken down. But it's within these ashes that we roam in this over three-year-old game that Bethesda has hidden a plethora of easter eggs and clever references for the player to uncover. So many that all this time later, much of what's buried underneath Fallout 4 remains hidden to some. So today we'll be taking a look at yet another 10 tiny details you may still have missed in Fallout 4. Part 6. Starting off, the quest, The Last Voyage of the USS Constitution, concerns the robotic crew of the antiquated, famous old naval frigate, the USS Constitution. The automated sailors aboard seek to put the ship back into service and head off to continue the fight against the communists. The player can either aid these remnants of a distant past in their patriotic crusade, or choose to betray them to a group of scavengers who seek to turn the vessel and its crew into scrap metal to sell. But that's neither here nor there. You see, the only reason the USS Constitution's crew allows you to come so close without blasting you is due to your character's previous service in the United States military, which is detected by the lookout robot before you board the ship. Though if you're playing as Nora, it'll still recognize your relationship to someone who is in the service and let you on anyway. Accessing pre-war records. Record found. 108th Infantry Regiment, 2nd Battalion. Ahoy there. Tis Providence, a member of the Congressional Army, is delivered to us in our hour of need. But take notice of which exact military regiment that lookout said you were a part of. The United States Army 108th Infantry Battalion. This is the exact same unit also served in by Privates Elliot Tersorian, Beckett, and Sergeant Daniels, whom you meet in Fallout 3's Mothership Zeta DLC. For those of you who are unaware, in the Mothership Zeta DLC, the Lone Wanderer got to explore a massive alien mothership as it drifted through the cosmos, and aboard it were many fellow humans whom those aliens have abducted from Earth at various points in time, and has still been keeping them alive, sometimes for thousands of years. There's even a difficult to understand Japanese man from the Shogunate period, but among those humans you got to meet were members of the 108th Army Battalion at the time of their capture. Nate and these long-forgotten friends served together. Now, considering a battalion could have over a thousand men, it is very likely that Nate and these characters never interacted, but it's still a possibility. Nonetheless, it looks like the 108th had quite a few of its men make it through the Great War, though through very different means. Next on our list, before we leave the USS Constitution, if your character decides to help the robots repair the ship and take off, you'll get a chance to witness a pretty spectacular scripted event, in which the vessel briefly takes to the skies. Alas, I say briefly, because only after a few seconds in the air, it will crash into a nearby skyscraper. I know, spoiler alert, they don't make it to China. But, as the vessel takes off, it's actually possible to jump onto it and ride it as it lifts off. Now, as soon as the ship makes contact with the building it crashes into, the player will be killed on impact. But it's still quite the experience. To do this, simply get on top of the building you flipped the final circuit breaker on, and jump onto the Constitution once it gets a bit close. Then, enjoy your view. But, do try and jump off before you get to the final destination because the results won't always be pretty. For a third spot, one potential random encounter the sole survivor may have while wandering the wastes involves a middle-aged man named Clinton and his daughter, Charlie, who will randomly spawn next to a small cooking fire alongside a road or in a parking lot. Neither of these characters will have particularly much to say, nor to loot, but they'll both be passive to the player unless otherwise provoked. This father and daughter duo may in fact be a reference to the 2006 Cormac McCarthy novel, The Road, which follows the tale of an aging man and his son as they make their way through post-apocalyptic America. Now, admittedly, I'm a bit skeptical, as notably the child in the road is a young boy, but hey, it's 2087, I suppose. For a fourth spot, all throughout Boston's coastal regions and rivers, you can find the corpses of strange mutated dolphin-like creatures that have, for whatever reason, been washing up rather frequently. However, did you know that if you shoot some of these weird fish things, they'll actually explode open? Now, some of these dolphins have already been pre-exploded before you get to them, but for those that aren't, well, there's a little bit of fun to be had. Halfway through at number 5, Piper is the founder and editor-in-chief of Public Occurrences, Diamond City's leading, and seemingly only, newspaper publication. 
As a player progresses throughout the game's main storyline, you'll be able to read a few of the print articles, which vary according to the Soul Survivor's actions. However, what you may not have known is that Public Occurrences in Fallout 4 is actually based off of a real newspaper that was called, well, Public Occurrences, that published its first issue in Boston in the 1690s. It was the first newspaper in the entire United States, and it only published one issue, as shortly after its first publication, it was closed down and banned by the ruling colonial government. Alas, just a few hundred years and a couple of nuclear bombs later, it appears under the leadership of one muckracking journalist, Public Occurrences is making its comeback. Sixth, Elder Maxon commonly gives great bombastic speeches aboard the Pridwin to his men. This is one of the things that characterizes this synth-hating leader of the Brotherhood of Steel. And just before they destroy the Institute, assuming you've joined the faction, Maxon will give one final rousing speech to his neo-knightly men. But should the player have dogged me as a companion during this great oration, your four-legged friend will actually stand on both of his hind legs as a sort of salute to Maxon's speech as it concludes. Take a look. But in the end, we will be saving humankind from its worst enemy. Itself. Ad victorium. Ad victorium. Ad victorium. Next, Assaultrons are powerful military robots, whom can often be found as extremely capable enemies in a variety of locations across Boston. High health, melee damage, and a literal laser on their head makes them a force to be reckoned with, even at the lowest of their levels. However, did you know that Assaultrons actually aren't Cyclopses, and they do indeed have two eyes? Just above the large laser beam on their head will be a pair of eyes that even look kind of adorable. I decided to include this fact on the list because until literally researching this video, I was under the impression that that big red laser beam on their head was indeed their eye. But hey, apparently it's not, so the more you know! For 8 Spot, Robotics Pioneer Park is a large ruined communal park just north of the Glowing Sea. The location is most notable for the wealth of feral ghouls that'll spawn here, as well as the level death claw that calls the park home. Suffice it to say, before you visit this place, make sure you're prepared for a fight. However, inside one of the buildings on this site will be four dormant Protectatron units, as well as a terminal which will activate them. If you choose to use that computer to power them on, the robots will begin to patrol the compound, and they'll open fire on any nearby ghouls, as well as the Deathclaw, making your job all the easier. But assuming you and your Protectatron allies win, they'll actually briefly walk up to the stage and pose in celebration before walking off and continuing to patrol the perimeter of the park for the remainder of the game. As long as you pretend these things aren't capable of ripping your arms off, it's one of the cutest things you can find in the Commonwealth. Getting close to the end here at number 9, upon the sole survivor's first visit to Good Neighbor, you'll be approached by a shady individual named Finn, who offers you INSURANCE, but in all actuality is openly trying to extort you, suggesting that if you don't pay up, he'll make sure you'll wish you had. From here, you'll have a few different dialogue options, but none of them actually change the end result, as shortly after you respond to Finn, he'll be called out by Good Neighbor's Mayor, Hancock, who will demand he knock off his whole scam, after which Finn will half threaten slash insult Hancock, prompting the town's leader to MURDER HIM TO DEATH IN COLD BLOOD BEFORE YOUR VERY EYES. The ghoulified leader of Good Neighbor will then welcome you into his city, and apologize for it not boasting the best of first impressions. Well, when you first enter Good Neighbor, if you choose to simply murder Finn yourself after his attempt to extort you, or before even, it really doesn't matter, then this entire scripted sequence will be slightly altered, and you'll also unlock some unique dialogue on Hancock's part who will approach and commend the player for, quote, walking into a place and asserting your dominance. Furthermore, despite being guilty of manslaughter, no one, not even the town's guards, will hold it against you. <laughs> I like you already. Walk into a new place, make a show of dominance. Nice. Good neighbors of the people, for the people. You feel me? Everyone's welcome. So, kids, I suppose the lesson to be learned here is, well, extortion is bad. 
And finally, last on our list, The Quest, The Secret of the Cabot House, is one of my favorite in the entire Fallout franchise. In it, you learn of the strange powers of the Cabot family, who have been living in luxury since before the Great War even began. The reason they're able to do this is thanks to a mysterious serum developed out of the blood of the family patriarch, Lorenzo Cabot, who all the way back in the 1800s led an expedition to the Middle East, where he found a strange alien artifact that has given him odd powers. After he came home, his son, Jack, imprisoned him in Parson State Insane Asylum, where he's been ever since. However, shortly after imprisoning his father, Jack discovered that he was able to use his blood to create a serum that allows people who inject it to defy aging. This has been going on for over 400 years. However, at the time of this quest, Jack will request that you head over to Parsons State Insane Asylum and stop a group of raiders from freeing his father. He claims his father's new alien abilities have made him absolutely insane, and he would undoubtedly wreak havoc upon the Commonwealth if released. Ultimately, the choice will fall upon you, whether you want to stop Lorenzo Cabot from escaping his imprisonment, or if you want to help him break free. It's one of the more difficult decisions you'll have to make in the game, because on one hand, Jack Cabot and his family do seem a bit evil for trapping a man in a cell for literal hundreds of years. But on the other, Lorenzo Cabot does also seem to be a bit, well, off. But ultimately, what I want to talk about is what happens if you decide to free Lorenzo Cabot. Because after choosing a side in this quest, there's an ever so small possibility that you'll unlock a new random encounter. In which, long after his escape, you can find Lorenzo standing on a roadside next to two corpses. If pressured, Lorenzo will admit to killing those people in the name of science reasons. While he won't actively turn hostile to you, it does in fact seem that Jack Cabot was right about his father. He is insane and out for blood. Alas, by the time you've let him go, it's a bit too late to reverse your decision. You've made your bed, now you have to sleep in it too. But with that, we are going to wrap up yet another 10 tiny details you may still have missed in Fallout 4. Part 6. Which of the ones featured on this list did you find to be the most interesting or your personal favorites? And what tiny details, easter eggs, and references are you aware of that I've yet to cover in this series? Leave a comment down below. As always, like ratings are very much appreciated. Thanks for stopping by everyone, and I hope to catch you all in my next video. Peace out everybody.